Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. Alright, so I know many of you are writing tomorrow and I thought that I'd just throw in one more question. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please just do the right thing, alright? And of course I'll keep throwing you guys with some good nuggets when it comes to maths and science. Alright, so uh, let's look at the photoelectric effect. So question 10, they say to us, uh, I took this, by the way, from uh, the prelim from uh, the Eastern Cape. Um, I think this is uh, the 2019 exam. So they say a group of learners uh, conducted an experiment to determine the relationship between the inverse of the wavelength of the incident photons on a metal and the maximum kinetic energy of emitted photoelectrons from the metal plate surface they represented their results as shown on the graph okay so there we, there it is we've got a graph of ek max against the inverse of the wavelength right so now they say to us which physical quantity is represented by the letter c the intercept on the vertical axis on the graph okay right i want you to note in this case of course uh, you've seen me do these graphs previously uh, if you haven't watched my videos on the photoelectric effect i would advise that you do so right so in this case we know that this would represent definitely the threshold uh, I mean, not rather the threshold frequency, but the work function, right? The work function. All right. So in this case, I want you to note, how would we prove that? So remember, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the equation for the photoelectric effect, um, you know, as we normally have it, right? So we know that E is equals to omega zero plus ek max but we know that ek max is on our um you know y axis so it should be the subject of the formula right so if we rearrange this so i would have ek max right if i take this to the other side i'd have e minus uh, omega zero so this would be e minus omega zero i've just swapped these around okay so now I am actually going to just quickly show you here. So you've got, remember, E is HF minus omega zero, right? But remember that F is C over lambda. So you've got HC over lambda minus omega zero. But remember that on your X uh, axis, you've got one over lambda there, right? So that means this is HC times 1 over lambda right which is our wavelength minus omega zero now if you think of this as a normal straight line function what would this be it would be y is equal to m x plus c so your m would be represented by those two right your x would be 1 over lambda and your c would be the work function and that's how you are able to prove it all right so i hope that you understood that ladies and gents all right so let's go to the second question they say light photons are of frequency 6.1 uh, times 10 exponent 14 hertz okay so they're giving us the frequency of our photons it says 6.16 times 10 exponent 14 hertz so we've got our frequency and in this case they are telling us that uh, they are incident on a metal uh, and on a metal plate rather of uh, photoelectrons that are released with a maximum kinetic energy of 5.6 exponent negative 20 so in this case we know that ek max all right would be 5.6 exponent minus 20 right and of course this is in joules right now in this case what did they want they wanted us to calculate the magnitude of the physical quantity represented by the letter x on the graph now the letter x on the graph represents right in this case remember this is one over uh, the wavelength but remember 
on a normal basis, this would be the threshold frequency over here. But what are we looking for? The inverse of the wavelength of the threshold frequency. So let's use our equation E is equal to omega 0 plus E K max. Okay. So we know that E is equals to H F, right? That's omega 0. Okay, so I'm going to write this as H F zero, right? Plus E K max. All right, now let's substitute. Of course, we know this is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 minus 34 multiplied by the frequency, which is 6.16 exponent 14. And this is equal to, okay, so now think about this threshold frequency. I can write it as C over lambda, right? So that would be 6.63 exponent minus 34 multiplied by the speed of sound, I mean the speed of light rather, Okay, multiplied by 1 over lambda. Okay, and this is plus EK max. So what is our EK max value? We said that is 5.6 exponent minus 20. All right, so we're going to do some gymnastics there mathematically, right? And uh, if I take the product there and I will subtract this value and I will divide by this guy, right? Okay, so let's do that quickly. So we're going to say, right, this is 6.63. Okay, let's start on the left-hand side. So 6.63 exponent minus 34. Okay, please do that uh, for yourself as well. Okay, exponent 14. Right, and we are going to subtract 5.6 exponent minus 20 okay and of course for our final answer we're going to divide by the product 6.63 exponent negative 34 times 3 exponent 8 okay so i seem to get a value 1 over lambda is equal to 1.77 exponent 6 and this this is per meter right so that is the answer that you get okay please verify that answer and make sure that you get to the same thing right okay so the next question they say the brightness of the incident light is now increased what effect will this change have on the following they say write down increase decrease or remain the same right so remember once we increase the brightness before we answer the questions right once we increase the brightness of the light what happens in this case it means that we are going to emit more electrons per second so in this case it means that the current increases because we are emitting the number of electrons that are emitted per second will increase. However, the kinetic energy of the electrons remains the same. Okay, so they say to us, what will happen to the gradient of the graph? Okay, uh, and they say, explain your answer. Now, remember, uh, I showed you that the gradient of the graph in this case shows you uh, the product of Planck's constant as well as the speed of light. That will never change, right? Because remember, this is a constant as well as the speed of light is a constant as well, right? So the gradient would remain the same, okay? Right, and of course, uh, because, um, right, so you can explain that in 10.3.1. Of course, I'm not going to write it down. Uh, I've just explained it. Right, it would remain the same uh, because both Planck's constant and uh, the speed of light remain the same, uh, and so, um, yeah, they do not change. Okay, 10.3.2 they say uh, 
the maximum kinetic energy of the released photoelectrons, right? They say draw a graph of the relationship between um, a brightness of incident photons and maximum kinetic energy of photons to explain your answer. Now, please remember that even though you can increase the brightness, all right, so um, let's try and draw that graph. Okay, so that looks a little bit skew. Okay, right, so um, what would happen? Even though you may increase the brightness, so if this represents the brightness uh, of the incident light, of course, you are increasing, right? What would happen to EK max? Right, EK max would essentially just remain constant. So that's the graph that you'd, you'd get. Okay, so EK max is in joules, right? Of course, the brightness, uh, you can uh, use different uh, indices, but uh, you can also use watts for that, okay? Right, so in this case, we're simply saying that it would remain the same. Oh, actually, I should have answered that question. So this is 10.3.2. So it would remain the same, right? And they said show with a graph. Of course, the greater the brightness, the kinetic energy or the maximum kinetic energy would remain the same in that case. All right. So ladies and gents, that is how the cookie crumbles right? Um, that is how you're going to answer that question. And please don't be intimidated by any of the graphs here. This is quite an easy section. And if you haven't looked at it, uh, please just have a look at it. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.